But before we start this video on the state of the Eagles, we got a little bit of Eagles breaking news right now. Uh, it's news that I've been waiting the last two days for. Uh, Jordan Howard is finally promoted to the Eagles active roster. And I was starting to hold my breath and starting to wonder if this was going to happen or if some team was going to pluck him off our practice squad. Uh, but the Eagles, they signed him to the active roster. They had one spot open so they don't have to cut anybody. And uh, I think you had to do it. Jordan Howard has been the best running back on this team so far. Um, obviously, Miles Sanders is hurt, and when he was playing, they didn't use him right. So it'll be interesting to see when Miles Sanders comes back how they're going to use Jordan Howard. But I think you have to go heavy dose of Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders and get those two guys to complement each other. Um, and then it'll be interesting to see who survives. Are they going to cut Boston Scott? What are they going to do with Kenneth Gainwell? Who will be the odd man out? That's going to be a very interesting question. Um, but Jordan Howard on the active roster is huge for the Eagles. It had to be done. And it was something, frankly, I was worried about that it wouldn't. Now... With that said, let's talk about these Eagles. Dallas still stinks. What am I doing? Can't think back here. I hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. So, you know, it is late at night. Uh, I just got home a little while ago. The football game is almost over. And... You know, I was just sitting there thinking about the Eagles. And I was thinking about the state of this team. Where do we go from here? And I was just kind of going through all the things I think we need to really get back to being a competitive team. Now, the year has sucked so far in terms of wins, losses. Um, we haven't won at home yet. Uh, we're week nine and still have no home games that we won. That's horrible. That's horrible. I don't remember things like that. I don't remember a defense that allowed quarterbacks to go 31 to 34, uh, 32 to 38, uh, having a 75 and a half completion percentage against our defense. I don't remember it. I don't remember Buddy Ryan ever. He would never put up with it. Jim Johnson would never put up with it. Bud Carson would never put up with it. Um, yet, Jonathan Gannon does. He does. And when I look at the state of the Eagles right now, uh, going into the second half of the season, um, I, look at, I look at it like this. Um, I start with the GM. Do the Eagles have a GM? And the answer is no. I don't believe they do have a GM. And I believe that they're in a critical stage right now, going into this offseason. And we're still a ways off. But the Eagles are going to have a lot of picks. They're going to have potentially three number one picks. Um, the last guy on earth I want making those picks or being in charge of those picks is Howie Roseman and the analytics department. Those are the, that is a formula for disaster. Because if you get this right, if you get this draft right, okay, you could, you could rebuild your team really quick. You have enough draft picks where you could rebuild very quick, especially if you focus on on defense okay so i don't think we have a gm yet i think we need a new one now this is a problem obviously because jeffrey lurie uh loves howie roseman and he definitely he is definitely worried about the material that howie roseman has on him obviously he's got pictures or something how he set up some rooms or some some uh, brothel in mexico or in, in italy or in europe somewhere he set up some brothel with wires and camera and it was wired for sound and he's got the pictures it's the only reason why i think i, I don't understand how else he could have no responsibility jeffrey lurie at the end of last year when he fired doug peterson go watch his press conference he says, I don't hold Howie Roseman responsible. How do you not hold him responsible for all the picks he's missed? It's absolutely insane. So I think we need a GM. I think what's going to happen with the GM is he is, Jeffrey Lurie, the owner, will feel pressure. He will feel pressure to get rid of Howie Roseman as a GM. He will go ahead and he will go home one day thinking about how is he going to do this. And he's going to put on Casino, right? He's going to put on the TV show Casino. And he's going to watch the Mafia do what they did with Robert De Niro where they keep giving him different jobs, right? Different titles. Uh, 
but he was really the guy running. And he's going to go, that's what I'm going to do. And he's going to make Howie Roseman like, um, you know, special counsel to the owner. It'll be some ridiculous thing like that. And then they're going to hire a GM. And it's going to be some unproven, unknown GM who's getting his first chance. And really what he will be is a front man for Howie Roseman. Mark my words. This is my prediction. If the Eagles move on from Howie as GM, this is what will happen. And really, we'll have this GM that will face the public. He will take all the criticism. But it'll be Howie Roseman that's really making the picks. And as soon as they make one good pick, Howie is going to have to tell everybody it was him that made that pick. So, GM, we got a problem. Uh, head coach. Now, if you ask me when the season first started, before the season started, I liked everything I heard about. Uh, Nick Sarian. I like everything he had to say. I, I don't get caught up in him being nervous and all those kind of things. But after the first few weeks of watching him, I thought we got Donnie Brosco. I'm like, dude, we got Donnie Brosco. This guy speaks a great game, but he doesn't do it. And I was I was getting very disappointed in him. But I've got to tell you, he actually is growing on me again. He is actually... He is actually... You know, I'm warming up to him again. Yeah, I had a couple of those. I have to pause there for that. But you know what I'm saying. Like, like what he's done the last few weeks in all seriousness, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. I dig what he did against the, the Lions. I dig, I dig what he did against the Chargers, especially the Chargers. Because he came out. And he was thrown. Everybody was getting very worried about him. And why is he throwing the ball so much? He's getting away from the run. But he was testing out that secondary because they were so banged up. Once he tested it out, nothing came of it. He went right back to the run. He started running, started running, started running. And then in the second half, he knew that they were keen on the run. And he started going to some play actions. He started doing something with Hurts. And Hurts started playing really good because of it. And I thought he's coached a good game. So right now... As we're sitting with the coach, I'm going to say he should stay We right now, today. Now, maybe this changes. There's a lot of time that can go by from now to the end of the year. But right now, I, I'm okay. I'm kind of okay with my man, uh, Nick Sariani. He's not Nick Cotite this week. Maybe next week he will. Who knows? But uh, I think the last few weeks, he's shown the ability, the humility, um, to actually change things up and not keep doing it. That's not Chip Dip Kelly like. Chip Dip Kelly would just keep doing the same thing, okay? So I think him and the offensive coordinator, I think they should be safe at this point. Um, the defensive coordinator has got to go. Got to go immediately. And to me, he may be a great guy. He may even be a good coach. I don't know. But what I don't believe in is the scheme. I don't believe in that kind of scheme. I believe that in today's football, modern football, where the offense has such an advantage over the defense, you have to be able, you have to be able to get pressure on the quarterback. And a lot of times, you're not going to just be able to get it with your front, uh, with your front four. It's not going to happen. Okay, some of these offensive lines are pretty good. And when that doesn't happen, you have to bring pressure. And you can't just bring, like, one linebacker and everybody knows who it is and picks it up right away like they did versus the Chargers. You've got to be able to mix it up, confuse the offensive line, confuse the quarterback. Jim Johnson was very good at that. And I want to see somebody in the mold of a Buddy Ryan, a Jim Johnson, a guy who believes pressure, pressure, pressure. A perfect example of a defense that I really like watching that you should watch is the Arizona Cardinals. Their defense brings pressure. It brings heat. And I'm a firm believer in that. So I think the coordinator has to go. And then when you look at the roster and you look at the players on this roster, okay, let's start with the offense. We have some foundational pieces to build upon. We have Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, Dallas Goddard. Um, maybe you gave up on Rager. I don't know. Um, Miles Sanders. Uh, to me, those are all young, skilled guys you can build on. Jordan Mulata. Landon Dickerson is a beast right now. He's a beast right now. And he's playing really well. Another guy to build upon. Okay, So you have some young pieces 
on offense. Now you're asking, well, what about the quarterback, right? What about Jalen Hurts? And my answer about Jalen Hurts is, is in, in all truthfulness, all honesty, I don't know. I don't know. I am undecided on the quarterback. I am undecided. I believe that he should play out the year and we should see how he, he comes along and give him the opportunity to get better and better. I think with Nick Seriani changing the game up the way he has, I think that we're actually going to see if Jalen Hurts is developing. Now, I really wish he would have had a chance to go out and try to win that game versus the Chargers. Not so much just because I want him to win, but I wondered in that fourth quarter, in that second half, I thought Hurts started to play pretty good. And one of the things that I started seeing him do was actually sit in the pocket. He was actually sitting in the pocket. Okay, and he delivered a couple strikes. And I think that's big. Could that be that he's taking the next step? We need to give him more time and see. I think, I think be, to be fair, you have to give him this year at least. I think after this year... You got to you got to make a decision, and the reason I say you have to make a decision is because of the picks that you have. You're not going to have three first round picks next year. You have them this year, so you have to figure it out this year. So I, right now I'm undecided on Hurts. I don't know. There are things I don't like about about his game. I I don't think his arms is very strong. I don't think he's always very accurate. I think he gives one read and he goes. Um, but then again, when when I all the things I just ma- named and all the things I mentioned. I believe are things that can be improved, at least to a certain degree. Maybe you can't go out and have the, you know, go from not having a big arm to having a, a you know, a Donovan McNabb arm or a Ken or a John Elway arm, more and Moon arm. You know, maybe you can't have that, but you can improve it. His accuracy can improve. That's the most important thing. Uh, you don't have to have a, if you don't have a big arm in, in, in the NFL, you have to have a very accurate arm. And, and those are things that he can improve. So I think the only fair thing to do with Hurts is to let him play it out. Let him play it out, and then we'll see. We'll see from that point whether he is or not. And I'll, I'll tell you when I say, when we get to the end of the year, I'm going to say, yeah, I think he's a guy. I don't think he's a guy. If he continues to do what we've seen most of the year, I would say he's not the guy. However, now that the Eagles are playing things a little different, maybe he'll have that chance. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm I'm very back and forth on Hurts. Um, I'm trying to be as fair as possible and give this guy a chance. Uh, I kind of know what Gardner Minshew is. You know what I mean? So I would rather just let Hurts play and see what he develops into. So quarterback, I don't know. Now, when you look at the defense on this team, the defense to me is atrocious. The defense needs a complete rebuild. The defense, when you look at this defense and you say, okay, look, in two, three years, when the Eagles, we would hope they're ready to compete after this draft, who right now on this team can I squarely say he's a foundational piece that I have to build my entire team around? There are some pieces that you may keep on defense, but there is not that guy. There's no. I don't believe the Eagles have those pillars on defense where I can say I'm building around him. You know, it's like the Eagles of old. I'm building around Brian Dawkins. I'm building around Reggie White, Jerome Brown, that defensive line. I'm building around Seth Joyner. They don't have it. They don't have it. They have Avante Maddox. I think he's a good role player. I think he's having a better year. Uh, Kevon Wallace. We don't know what he has. Josh Sweat just got a just got an extension. I don't know that he's going to be a premier pass rusher at this point. Uh, Javon Hargrave, great player, but Javon Hargrave is in his prime right now. What's he going to be in three years? You see what I'm saying? We don't have young, foundational pieces, shut up dogs. You know what I'm saying? We don't have that. We don't have, we don't have dogs on defense. We don't. And we need it desperately. We need it desperately. So... I mean, I'm just thinking about I, none of these. Line, I like T.J. Edwards. I I like Davion Taylor. I hope they can develop in something. But there's no there's no blue chip players on defense right now that I could say in three four years this guy is going to be something special. This is guy is going to be a stud. Fletcher Cox is old. Uh, you know, Brandon Graham is older. These guys are older. They you know I mean they're winding their career down in two three years. They're not going to either be on this team or they're not going to be what they were. 
Uh, you you got to find guys. Uh, you know, Darius Slay, he, in a few years, I don't know if he's going to be on this team. Steven Nelson, same thing. So I don't know who we have on defense to build around. There's nobody. Now, maybe some of these guys will develop, and that's great. But right now, we don't have anybody. That's why the best and the quickest way for this team to get better is for Jalen Hurts to actually work out. That's what we should all want. We should want him to work out so that we can take those three first-round picks. I would Here's what I would do. I would get those three first-round picks. You right now are picking 3, 7, and 14. I would take that 14th overall pick. I would trade it for a second this year and a first-round pick next year. Somebody will give you that. And then what I would do is I would make sure I have at least two first-round picks next year, and I would have the two first-round picks this year plus that extra second. And then, on defense, I would take the best pass rusher I can at three. If he's the, the premier, you know, I'm assuming that he's the best player on the board, too. i take the best defensive player on the board, regardless of position. But, let's assume it's the defensive end from Oregon. I would take him. Then I would take either Stingley or this kid Hamilton, the safety. Um, and I would get come out of this draft, come out of the top 10 with two blue chip players that I can build my defense around. Now you have foundational pieces on defense to build around and you start building. That's what this team has to do. Um, but some things are going to have to happen. You have to get a GM in here who knows how to draft, knows talent. The Eagles spend too much time on analytics and not enough time trusting the scouts who can look and you know knows if guys pass the eye test. I trust the scouts much more. So to me, that's what it's about. Right now, uh, when I look at this team, you need a GM. You, 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 you need to f- keep letting Hurts play and find out what you have in a quarterback. You've got some, you got some pieces on offense to build around, no doubt about it. But you gotta get, you got a lot of pieces you got to get on defense because I don't think they have a lot. So to me, when I go in all, all season, it's all about the draft. I may spend a little money here, or there on free agency. I'm not gonna go over. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna build this thing up right over the next two years. That's what I would do. That's how I would handle this. I, if I was the owner, I'd get a new GM. I would let my coach probably have another year if we if we base it upon the season being over today. And then I would really focus on on getting as much quality talent as I can. And I would focus early in the draft, very heavy on defensive end, uh, corner, safety, linebacker. And then you can mess around and, and keep building up that offensive line. That's how I would go about it. Um, and... Uh, that's where I think the state of the Eagles are at this point. This was just on my mind all day. I was thinking about it, and I wasn't even going to put a video out uh, today, being that it's Tuesday uh, when you're seeing this. Um, but I was like, you know what? I got to get this off my chest. So here you go. A rant, a rave. What are you going to do? Let me know what you guys think in the comment. Where do you think this team is at right now uh, besides, you know, just stinking? Uh, and where do you think we go? And where do you start? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Oh, by the way, the other thing they got to do, alternate jerseys, buddy. Alternate jerseys. Bring it back. The greatest logo of all time. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. <laughs>